The Philippines remain one of the fastest growing economy in, in Asia. So that's something that we have prayed for a long, long time to happen, and it's happening. And you are seeing we are probably in the center of that growth you know, here at VGC. Uh, so we are still growing at about 4 or 5%. That's faster than our neighbors. So China will slow down. Probably if we grow a little faster, we'll be the fastest growing economy in Asia next year, maybe. No? That's, not, that's not a remote possibility except if Vietnam grows faster. It, um, also, uh, employment. There are more people with more jobs right now. Uh, this is even 5 million uh, huh. bigger than pre-pandemic levels. Huh. So that means a lot of people have jobs right now, and that's what you are seeing around, around you. That's the reason why we are not experiencing social unrest despite very high prices. Right? Our prices have been rising but since people have jobs generally you know they can afford a little bit of it here and that but uh, it's not going to cause you a lot of problems right but even if us we are growing very fast one of the challenges of our growth is that over time it was so slow because we have been catching up for the longest time um, each time we meet uh, people from other countries like in us in Asia, they will always say that you know the Philippines is the look. We looked up to the Philippines years ago, but now uh, we're still looking up to you. But your growth seems to be compared to our growth uh, spectacular today. But you came very late to the party, huh. right? So a little bit like that. Okay. So because everyone else had had been to, to the party, so now even with that fast growth, we're actually overtaken by many countries already. So Vietnam just overtook us last year in terms of our income per capita. Wow. Right? So that's uh, that's really sad, but I'm thinking if we are growing faster than them, then probably we'll get it back. At least get it back from from Vietnam. We're, we're not it, we're not here to say that we are better or, or that, but it's just a matter of national pride, right? To not to be uh, slowing down as as been the last how many years. So having said that, and relating it to what uh, Pastor Mark had shared with us, there are things that is causing this that we need to address. So there are economic transformational issues. Um, as uh, you see, the first one is that we have a geographical imbalance of growth. Yes, we are growing, but that growth is imbalanced. So it's not all the regions of this country. Second. We have jobs, right? Lots of jobs right now, more than 5 million than before. But that number of jobs that we are producing, they are of low productivity type, meaning the quality is low. So therefore, they will have income, but the income will not be high enough. And then, this is worsened by poverty, malnutrition, education, health, and health human resource. Now, I'll show those data in a bit. This has led to high inequality. So the rich becomes richer, poor becomes poorer, and the worst thing is that the general population accept this as okay, right? It's like it's our fate. So it's okay that we are at this level only. And lastly, and as we are all experiencing right now, our agriculture has been really so bad, and it's not encouraging at all. If nothing is done uh, to change the way this been. You know, it has just been in the last 30, 40 years. So let me show you first that if we distribute the growth across the country, there are actually just three regions in the Philippines that is growing. Wow. And that is where we are, basically, NCR, Region 3, Region 4A. So it's a, it's a contiguous region. If you see it in the map, it is a huge swath of land where we are. And the rest, uh, Wow. The rest region, we were in Cebu and Iloilo region 6 and 7, they were 
uh, they're adding a little bit, and of course, Dabao is also adding a little bit, but really, you know. And this is actually the reason why when Yolanda, Odette, and the rest of the huge typhoons that hit us, people were surprised we grew. The economic growth is still very high because it did not hit Metro Manila. Right? I, and I think the Lord has been trying to preserve that by, 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 by God. Imagine, and I don't like that to happen, if a disaster like that struck Luzon, you know, the growth would significantly decline. So the last time we had something like that was uh, July 1990, 91, the Pinatubo and the July 16 earthquake. Yeah. So I think most of you were already alive that time. So <laughs> you would remember the huge earthquake and the so, eruption of Mount um, Pinatubo. Right? So this is what I'm saying. If you look at the productivity of people, really the agricultural sector here produces very low output. And that's why it causes a lot of people not to eat, not to go to that kind of activity. But the thing is we are an agricultural country. Yeah. We are still uh, filled with lots of agricultural lands, yes. but nobody wants to steal the land. So if nobody's stealing the land, then therefore somebody will either steal it, or, or if you're not stealing it, it will be stolen from you, and the prices will go down. You know? Some, not, not in the terms that they will take it away, but they will buy it at very low prices. Yeah. So it will be converted to something else, so it will re result to high prices of food, which we are experiencing right now. Wow. So you, how do you convert that? The rest of the people don't like to do production. right? They like to be in, in, uh, in transport. They like to be in accommodation. All services that are of low, I'm not saying they're not they're bad, but the quality of the ability to increase the income there is very low. Right? In agriculture, when many years back we did survey young people, why you are not uh, becoming farmers? Why, why, why are you not studying to become farmers? When you are studying in, a, in an agricultural school, and at that time I did not understand it, the answer of many of the young girls there was that uh, glutathione is expensive. <laughs> so they did, and that uh, the, the rest said that there is no phone signal in the field, right? So, wow. so that, that you know, this seems to be very trivial, but actually at that time I was laughing and I didn't understand, but they were serious. They were serious. So that's, that was about 20 years ago. And this is now the outcome that we're seeing today. The average age of the farmer is now close to 60. Right? So that farmer will now get uh, benefits, so all the more don't like to farm because they could get some benefits from the government, right? And this is worsened by poverty. We have lo lowered poverty, but not as fast as our neighbors. No? So Vietnam, in 2001, we have the same poverty rate almost with Vietnam, 37, Vietnam, Philippines, 40. By 2018, we were still at about 16, 17%. Vietnam had gone down to about 6%. No? Very tremendous decline in poverty. And also, I think the worst part is that we have the problem of stunting. And if you don't know what stunting is, it's uh, stunting is not only the height, it's also the capacity of the brain because the brain did not grow. So it is irreversible by the way. So if by the age of five you are stunted, it's you are stunted for life. You cannot change that reality. And yes, all of the nation in ASEAN also have that same problem, but look at what they have done. Cambodia was 51% stunted in 2001. It's down to 30 in 2018. We were better, 36% in 2001, but we only went down by 6%. So roughly no change compared to, other, to our neighbors. So that means uh, one in three workers in this country is stunted. So you notice some people are very difficult to deal with. Not, not because they are uh, they did not study or they have difficulty, but the ability to absorb information because of the brain, a standard brain. Okay. Uh, and then we have an education system that is in crisis. Uh, we have one of the lowest uh, score in all over the world. 
uh, in 2018, that's the last time we had the standardized test taken by students all over the world. And we have one of the lowest score. The only, we beat Dominican Republic. Not in basketball, but uh, <laughs> in, uh, in mathematics and science. Oh, man. At least, at least we, we are not the dead last. They are the dead last, but they still beat us. Oh, the FIFA. <laughs> so that's, that's, no, that's the crisis. And I did not add any more there that the teachers, the teachers are not also of good quality. Yes. So about only one third of those taking teachers will pass the exam. Teacher board, yeah. and we I, while in Cebu, I was sharing to the students, to the people there, right? in Cebu, and they agreed, right? Because everybody who is going to college, if they see the students not so good, or oh, you don't study other things anymore, just study to become a teacher, right? So they, they're pushing kids to study to become a teacher, even if they're not qualified to become a teacher, because they themselves don't like to become a teacher. So when they take the board exam, naturally they will fail. So they, that's the reason why we have this very low passing percentage. And who will teach the students? So if the failing teachers will teach the student, what do you expect? That's the data that you are seeing there. Right? And it has been happening. That means it, this did not happen last year. It, this has been happening for decades. And we have not been able to arrest that problem. Uh, and this one, uh, I added this recently because this is a, a major problem that we're seeing right now. About, I added this Bishop Honey because you remember two, about two, uh, almost two months ago I was hospitalized. I had uh, an operation. And while in the recovery room, I can barely open my eyes, but I can hear. The nurses were saying, we're talking to each other. One said, what time did you arrive today? No, I haven't gone home for the last two days because there is no replacement nurse. Imagine my brain started to try to open my eyes. So these nurses have not gone home for the last two days, right? So I knew because then I went back to this study I did in before just before the pandemic because I went around the Philippines trying to find out how many how many health workers do we really have? We actually have a lot of health workers. A lot of them, about 3.5 million will enroll to become health workers every year. But only about 700,000 will be qualified. And then if you absorb them into the system, very few will really come into the system. So there is actually a shortage of nationwide about 20,000 health workers. But the, re the total, uh, the rest are not in the health sector, they are out there either abroad or they're working in the BPOs, which they are paid higher. So I think this is a crisis that's been happening and it's not easy to, to address. Okay, so don't get sick, my friends. Okay. And uh, but this, this is also our challenge. This is the poverty becoming bigger, right? Because the, the inequalities of it, uh, rather is becoming larger. The poorest, the income of the poorest is, to, the richest is 12 times the poorest, 10%. So all, all in all, if you summarize that, about half of the income is only earned by 20% of the population. So that's how large it, it, it is. Okay? And these are the data that I'm really so so disappointed. When, when I for, first saw this in 2015, I'm all, all right with it. It was 2015. And people were, these are the dreams of the people for 2014. It's called the 2014, 2014 vision of the Filipinos. One of the well-made survey. It, many of these you'll find the aspirations. They're actually very simple aspirations. And many of these have been achieved already. For instance, they want their children to go to college. This has been made free by President Duterte. Right, uh, income tax of twenty-five thousand. In fact, the tax rate has been cut, so people are paying less taxes. Than that uh, they want to own a car. They actually don't want a car anymore. Just a motor, a motorcycle would be enough. Even two of them, right? So everybody almost had two or 
alternative vehicle, and then own a medium-sized home. Maybe not not all have uh, houses at this point, but at least they will be able to travel around the country and have enough money for the, the need. So many of these have been achieved in 2022, and we're still about 20 years to 2040. So that means very low level of aspirations. There seems to be a lead, and people don't want to dream uh, further down in the future or dream higher. And this is what I was uh, more surprised in that data. If you look into the details of the data, you find this information. The people who were surveyed, they were asked, what is your assessment of your current life status? And they were assessed according to their income level, A class, B class, C, D and E. So D and E are the poorest uh, members of the population. And you'll find that even the poorest member of the population, about 20% of them said that they are contented. So if you're poor, how can you say you are contented? In Tagalog, pwede na yan. Okay lang yan. So if they don't dream, their dream is capped, and they're okay with it, and so it perpetuates itself. That, that kind of uh, data that we have seen, it's perpetuating itself because people's minds are capped. They are okay with what they have, right? So this is uh, really one of the challenges that you want to, to break when you want to transform the nation, to change this mindset of pwede na yan. But I say, pwede na ba yan? Pwede na ba yan? No. De, no. Diba? We should not agree to this. Yeah. Pwede na. It should be, then we must be able to do something. Right? And look, this is also perpetuated by being in, being in debt. A lot of Filipinos are indebted. And most of the debt are rising. Right? So even if they have, I, I think the, the reason why they have uh, increased their debts is because they have jobs. So they think in their head, well, I can borrow because I have a job. So the last few data here on the, this side shows you that people are actually borrowing a lot right now. Oh, wow. You know? And uh, it's, it's okay if you have ability to pay. But look, the people are indebted to meet their goals. The people are indebted to protect themselves during typhoons, during disaster, and even for liquidity, for extra day cash. Okay? So imagine that kind of a mindset. You know? It's all right to be indebted. And, and even if we try to do our best to stop the 5-6, uh, informal lender, you know, they charge 20% interest per month. And many of the small medium enterprises, they borrow from this because it's a character loan. And they all, they're all right with it. In fact, if we're able to solve the, this problem with the informal lenders, prices of goods and services will go down. Because many of, people, many of the people selling in the markets are indebted to the informal lenders. So they're actually putting a high uh, price to you know, mark up to be able to pay that debt. So yeah, imagine how how we can change the structure yeah. by just addressing that. All right. So yeah, in agri, I more more bad news. So this is agri. This is over the years. You have seen that in the last 20 years, there's no improvement in the output of our any agricultural product. They're all flat. So the same. The population has been increasing, but we have the same uh, output in mango, pineapple. But we were in Cebu. Remember, in, during the breakfast, we were asking for mango. And the lady said, no, there's no mango. How come? This is Cebu. This is like mango. Yeah. And then the lady told me, I certainly like mango. That's extra order. I said, why? <laughs> and she said, because there's not enough mango this, the rest are being produced like the dried mango, right? So, you cannot imagine, but you look at the data, it's saying exactly because there's not enough mango. And mango in here in Manila is about 250 to 300 pesos per kilo, right? Yeah. That's, yes, that's how expensive it is, right? More expensive than apple and, and imported fruits, right? So, we're all flat. So, not 
don't be surprised, we are importing because we do not produce enough. No? So today coming here, uh, tomato is 300 pesos per, per kilo. Okay? Right. So, yeah, two things. So we need uh, BG, BG's farm. Uh, we will, uh, we have tomato BG's. Yeah, okay, so we will, we will know what to buy tomato. Right? But the pro problem also is the government tries to solve this problem by addressing the major one only, not not addressing everything. So they put all their money in, in rice, in, in palay. So you will see. But if you put it in palay, not all places in the Philippines produce rice very well. So if that's the case, you give away some of the things that you can produce more food. food. Sayang, right? Sayang. Right. So, if we don't do anything, if we do, if we remain business as usual, we will all be dead before the agriculture sector doubles its output. It will take 68 years based on our economic model. Right? Okay, so this well, well, this is the big picture. So what do we do based on the call of Dr. Mark, based on the things that we have learned? I think there's some practical things we have learned. So after I made this presentation in Cebu, uh, Pastor and Ador came to me and said, what should we do? There must be something that we can do as the body of Christ. So we talked about it. We bring heaven on earth. Yeah? So we bring heaven on earth, doing a model of transformation. Anong tawag natin? Langit sa lupa. Yeah, something like that program. So a model of transformation uh, wherein what we need to do is we know the data is saying that these are the problems that we have. And so we address the felt needs of people. So we let's identify, for example, we are in Taguig, so my Mayor Lan is here. Let's identify that barangay, the barangay that has the highest stunting, the lowest educational attainment, the lowest income or the highest unemployment. So we can do something. So it is not going to be done by one church, but the whole church will focus all of its support towards that single place, single barangay or community. And the church will just be a part of it because you will, the transformation team can come together in, in Taguig, the church, the business, media, and the city government can be organized to identify what can be done. Right? So address felt needs, raise funds, uh, develop specific programs or develop metrics to, for this particular place. And Kong Al and I were talking about some basic programs. So like what the uh, pastor was saying earlier, you cannot do really uh, homeschool here because the, both parents either are working, so it's not possible. But there is, there is a lot of daycare opportunities. So if we cannot catch them in elementary, we cannot catch them in high school, you know, catch them at the daycare level because this is something that every barangay wanted, a daycare center. So a daycare that will use the curriculum, Christian curriculum taught by church volunteers, right? But run through uh, support money from business and then media can highlight what is being done. So you know, come up with a prototype of some kind that in daycare. And second, uh, since we don't have enough food, why don't we start some community vegetable uh, garden? Right? Start something small like that. Then again, supported by business and the government. And then for business to start going into the community and hiring people from there, but first training them, enterprise-based. Because here, a lot of people graduate college, but they really cannot find a job because it's not matched to the needs of the industries. But why, what you can do is those who are uh, the businesses can go to that identified community and say, right, we will train you, and then we will hire you right, directly. We don't need to go in the middle. You don't need the degree right now because what is needed is immediate employment. So some sort of... Uh, like this that we can think about. So I guess uh, it's not impossible. We start yeah. small and, and put all our combined resources into one. 
so that it's not a feeding program, it's not a training program, but it is an integrated uh, transformational community activity that everyone has a, has a role to play. So I think that ends. So thank you very much. Yeah.